We are one month into the professional tournament series, and I thought it's time to take a look back. Now I should say, I thought about doing this live so I can interact with y'all. So if you want me to do these live monthly or every other week or something, whenever I have time, put it in the comments and just tell me that you want me to do the live shows. Then you guys can participate, ask questions, and we can talk about it. But these are my opinions on what's going on in the professional world of bass fishing. We are going to talk about Major League Fishing. We're gonna talk about the Bass Masters. We're gonna talk about the Opens. And we'll even talk a little bit about NPFL. But to start off, we need to just get it right out there. Bassmaster Opens is quite possibly the best fishing tournament to watch because these are anglers that are very willing and eager and want to win. They want that next step into the Bassmaster Elites. Now they have to compete in all nine events to get in there and be in the top 10, but quite possibly one of the hardest, toughest fields there is in professional fishing is the opens because there's just so many people who want it. My first take on it is Ben Milliken. I think I mentioned this. Ben has a YouTube channel. I Let me just be clear so I don't get a Duncan on me. I don't know Ben. I watch have watched his videos many times. I think he is a very, very good angler. From what I can see, and I know there's some editing behind it, but Ben is very good on his forward-facing sonar, and I think there's going to be a lot of spots where that knowledge is really going to help him. I said I thought he was going to do really well. There's anglers in those opens, and I have to look down, such as Brandon Lester, Kenta Kamura, Palinik, uh, Pragnak, Upshaw, Bobby Lane Jr., Ish Monroe, Brandon McNillan, Steve Kennedy, and Greg Hackney that are all fishing that open. There's actually 223 anglers that fish that first tournament. There's 175 that are going to fish all nine tournaments. And that is unbelievable. But I have to say, to start off, I was really pleasantly happy for Ben. Now, as I record this, the Bassmaster Elites have had two tournaments. Still amazing. Tyler Rivet won the first one. Um, the second one was won by Joey Fuentes. Two, I think, first-time winners. Two amazing, really good anglers. Tyler had a great second um, tournament where I think he came in second or third. And the Bassmasters is the Bassmasters. They haven't changed anything. They haven't really done anything crazy to make things new or more exciting. They're just consistently good. Now, my take on this might not be as popular as other people, as others have it, but I hate, 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 maybe I should say I dislike, that's a better word to use. I dislike the legendaries exemption. I know Larry Nixon is one of the best anglers of all time. He just doesn't compete with these new kids. He came in dead last in his first tournament. I think he came in 60th on the second tournament. While I think it's great to have him in the Bassmasters, I think that legendary exemption is, I think it's crap. Uh, I think that if you, if you want to be on the elites, you should have to qualify for the elites. And that goes for Kevin Van Dam too, even though he is retiring. And if he wants to come back to the elites, I don't think he should be, he should have to use his legendary exemption. I think you should, you should have to qualify for it. My reasoning behind that is, is you just give someone willy nilly to come back here and there because of what they've done 20, 30 years ago, while I love Kevin and Larry and all those other guys, I just don't think it's fair for those other guys who are trying their hardest to go through the gamut of opens and anglers that you have to deal with in the toughest competition, which the opens are, to just get a free pass. Like I said, I know this isn't going to be the most popular take by a lot of people, but I don't think Nixon should be in it. That's just me. I think that if you wanted to be in it, qualify for it. Just qualify. Prove that you're that you can do it. Because these days these kids, and I mean that nicely, these young men are so well versed on every part of fishing, from drop shotting to cranking to finesse to forward facing sonar to doing what it takes to not eating all day for the nutrition, for everything. They get in better shape that allowing someone who's no offense old 
to come in and take someone else's spot is just not what I want to see. I want to see the best of the best of in the elites. And when the elites still are having less name people compared to MLF, I know that Nixon is a name. I just think that you should make them have to earn it to get in. Don't give them a freebie. And Major League Fishing has had their first tournament. And as of today, they had the Red Crest. Chris Lane won the first tournament. And then Brian Thrift, who is just a stud fisherman, won the Red Crest. The biggest thing that the Red Crest has had this year is they've had a couple people leave. I know that Ish was joined MLF because it was more money. Now he is in the Opens trying to compete and get back into the Elites, which is going to be a chore for him because he did not have a very good first tournament in the Opens, which is a whole nother story. But Major League Fishing changed the scoring system to five fish this year. I am going to be... 100% brutally honest here. At first, I thought this was a good thing for MLF and the Bass Pro Tour. After watching the first two tournaments, I hate it. I don't like it at all. And here's my reasoning why. Major League, the thing Major League Fishing had above everybody else is not only did they have the name brands, but you just got to see a lot of fish being caught. Now, I know the first year everyone didn't like it because MLF stand for more little fish because everybody was going after schools of fish that were one pound and they catch a hundred of them, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's at least you're catching them. Then that last year they made it so it was a two pound average or over two pound average. And then this year it's the best five fish where they've kind of gone back to what bass has done in the, in the tournaments in the past. That is a proven cycle of making good fishing tournaments. It doesn't make for good television or internet watching. The t fishing that's online and that you watch online and it goes for bass and MLF, they put a cameraman in a person's boat. And if they are not on fire and catching fish, it is quite possibly the most boring thing to watch ever. It's, you might as well go out and watch the grass grow because there were so many lulls in the fishing and catching fish that not only did we see the same commercial that's four or five minutes long, it seems like, but they kept repeating themselves over and over and over about what was going on, about how they were only always using forward-facing sonar or they were always using a certain bait. And after 10, 15 minutes and you hear forward-facing sonar said 55 times, then you're just over it. And it isn't interesting fishing to watch. Now, I'm not saying it needs to be a catch every minute, but what Major League Fishing had in the past was they had anglers they had that were on top of schools and just beating up those schools, and I don't think that was right, but at least they were catching fish. Right now, while they've went back to that proven thing, that, that proven tournament way of, of catching fish, I find found that the Major League Fishing viewing was boring. It was just boring. I think they made a bad mistake making this format change. I didn't think so at first, but now I really do think it was a bad decision. Now I understand what what I'm starting to realize is that a lot of people were just like, only Wheeler is gonna win. I mean, Jacob does the, the, the research and everything to put himself in those positions. So I understand why some of the anglers, and the anglers voted for this new format change, I think that they made a horrible mistake. And I think it's one they're gonna regret because I just don't see people watching it for a significant amount of time. I think their people are gonna watch the highlights. It's like a watching poker. Uh, while I love to do it, I'd rather watch the 10 minute thing of the people getting the bad beats or winning the most amount of money than the six hours that's overnight of every hand and all the other blah that goes on, the blah talk as it's happening. This is what I'm finding on Bassmasters and I'm finding on Major League Fishing. There's just so much talking about nothing. Uh, it isn't funny, it, it isn't interesting, it's about the weather, they get people in. There just seems to be the same thing being said over and over and over. And I think that's a problem that's gonna hurt Major League Fishing, because I do think it hurts bass too. While we're talking about Major League Fishing, the invitationals on Major League Fishing, that is another group of absolutely killers of bass fishermen. 
the invitationals and the opens are stacked with unbelievable anglers and it's one you need to check out and while i didn't say it in the Bassmaster section we had a mike iconelli sighting i'm dumbfounded i forgot that he was even in bass masters he did so bad last year but this year he started off on a different foot and has had two decent tournaments so i'm very happy for him and hope that he continues because well keeping it real he sucked last year i think i could outfished him and that's a joke And while Brian Thrift won the Red, Red Crest Championship for MLF, they really picked the wrong place to go fishing. Uh, 41 pounds over two or three days for the winning weight, or 45 pounds, whatever it was, it was a bad decision to go fish there. I know you can catch some decent fish here and there, but what we found out is most of those fish are two pounds and under, and that isn't very exciting to watch. So I think they need to do a little more due diligence in picking the proper places to fish instead of where they probably get the most money and get paid to go fish there. I wanna see someplace where they catch studs. Go to Texas, go out to California, go someplace where you're catching big fish. When the average fish is like two, two and a half, three, it's really boring and there just wasn't enough catches to make the Red Crest tournament very interesting. And with this new scoring format, the drama just wasn't there. It was, they did their best. I think Marty Stone has the worst jokes on the face of the earth that don't even, I mean, you can hear crickets at times after some of the jokes he says. And he, while he has a great voice and is very knowledgeable, I just don't think he hits the mark as a analyst for bass fishing. I wish he wouldn't, I wish he would get off the jokes and just stick to some of the facts. He knows the anglers very well, but he isn't funny. He isn't funny. A fart in the elevator is much funnier. And last, while I don't think it should be even remotely mentioned in with the Bassmasters or the Opens or MLF or the Invitationals, the NPFL, which is starting today, you probably didn't know that as I film this, is back. They're paying anglers $100,000. Uh, I don't know. I I'm, I'm confused on the NPFL. They've been together for three years. They've had three years where they've had more and more anglers drop out. While they've raised the, the stakes on the winner to win, people just don't want to fish that tournament. And I don't know why. And and to win, if you're only if there's only 76 anglers and they're winning a hundred grand, you have a really good shot at doing something really well. John Cox, the real John Cox is gonna fish it this year, which should be real fun to watch. But there just isn't, they don't have, they don't have the, the oomph or the backing or the reach that the other people do have at this point in time. And I think they've made mistakes year after year after year. And I think this year is even worse than the first two years. And, that, and I think at first you can say it was a learning curve. And now I'm starting to realize it's just, they're just doing things wrong. Now, I would say to some of these in, invitational anglers or these open anglers that are willing to go fish a tournament and probably uh, they're willing to go fish these tournaments just to get into the elites, I think that the opportunity to win money would be better on NPFL. I'm not saying anything against the anglers that are on there, but when you have your John Cox and your Patrick Walters who come in and just fish a few tournaments and make significant money, there's a different level of anglers compared to those anglers compared to the average Joe, which I think a majority of them are average Joes, and that's not throwing shade or saying anything negative. I just think MPFL has done things consistently wrong time after time after time. And I saw some of their stuff that said how many views they got on YouTube and watched on their their uh, website and honestly it was the most shocking number i've ever seen in my life and when i did the research into it it wasn't even remotely close the numbers they had said were the numbers that major league fishing and bass put together didn't reach so 
I don't know how MPFL is going to do well. I think next year they'll probably do a little bit better because $100,000 to win with only 76 anglers, there's a good chance. Now, after seven, after that the first place winner, the money drops drastically. But you could get out there, be a really good angler, and probably make some decent money. It's just, can they, can they withstand the beating that they're taking and that no one knows what they're doing? No one knows. I think I put up that poll last year during one of their tournaments and 212 people or 211 people voted on it and it was 2% of the angling community knew that they had a fishing tournament. So that's one of the major issues that an NPFL has to do. Are they going to do a better job of it? No, they're not. Can some of these guys from the Invitationals and the Opens go there and make money? Probably. But it's a tournament that if you're an angler, you're not getting your name out. You're not bettering your sponsorships. Um, you might be able to get a discount and some sponsors might be happy that you do well on there. But quite honestly, as someone who owns a little portion of a, a, a tackle company, if someone came to us and said we were want we wanted to fish NPFL, we might laugh in their face because you just don't get the the views or the recognition or the NPFL just doesn't have that aura behind it compared to Bassmasters or Major League Fishing or the Invitationals or the Opens. But like I said, I think if you were one of those Opens or Invitational anglers, it might be a good idea to look at NPFL, win yourself some money, and recoup some of your losses. So what do you think? Should I continue doing these kind of videos? Do you want to see more monthly, bi-monthly? Do you want me to do these as a live feed? Comment below and tell me what you think. I really appreciate y'all hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I didn't point. I'll talk to y'all soon. Cheers.